Elkerton, grew up surfing Malulaba on Queensland's Sunshine Coast, where he was given the nickname King Kong as a child, as he was much bigger than the other kids. By the time he was 14, Gary worked for his dad as a deckhand on a shrimp trawler. Diving and surfing alone on the shark-infested, remote, open ocean waves of the Great Barrier Reef and Queensland's isolated offshore islands. The first time I met Kong was at Kira in 1984. He blew my mind with his powerful surfing and amazing tube riding skills. Shortly thereafter, the performers came out and he became a favorite of surfers worldwide. His North Shore act became legendary, matching the force of these massive open ocean waves with equal parts power and grace. Surfing Magazine stated Gary Elkerton's brash, devil-may-care attitude and extreme commitment to hard, pure, radical surfing when it gets good and heavy puts Gary in a class of his own. He was the first non-Hawaiian to win the Triple Crown, winning three Triple Crowns in total. But perhaps his greatest accolade there became in 1987, when there were two events run back to back at Sunset Beach, the Hard Rock Pro and the Billabong Pro. Kong won both. In the Hard Rock, Kong won every one of his four-man heats. In the Billabong, he smoked the field with jazz-handed power carving, impossibly deep fades to bottom turns, and impeccable timing on one of the most challenging playing fields on the North Shore. He is considered perhaps the most dominant surfer of all time out there. Kong explains his uncanny connection with Sunset Beach. You know, Sunset was really my spot, even though I did win a pipe, uh, a big pipe. Um, Sunset is still probably the most demanding wave on the planet. Um, people underestimate it a lot. And uh, so I put in hours and hours and hours and hours of time so, you know, it was exciting times. The th thing I, that really sticks out for me that, you know, when I, if you couldn't compete in Hawaii, you were nobody. That was basically the bottom line. If you were a young kid coming to Hawaii and basically it was like this. If Sunset Beach or Waimea or Pipe was out of control, Third Reef, absolutely horrifying, and there's no one out and the local guys are sitting on the beach, you grab your board and walk past at them, give them a wink and paddle out. That's how you did it. And I, I had that embedded in me really early on with Rabbit. And uh, I made a point about Hawaii that, uh, that I was going to do everything and surf every, anything that was thrown at me, especially at sunset. I was quite lucky. I had, I had some good people behind me. And uh, one of the guys was uh, a guy called Derek Donor. And um, he taught me and showed me some lineups there that uh, were, were priceless. They're not there anymore. But um, I, I had this thing about paddling out at sunset at dark. And I would sit there till my eyes kind of got right. And then I would paddle in and catch the first three waves before anyone got out. To get the whole picture of sunset, it's like this. You've, I, used to go, I used to go up the back of Comsat Hill and I would sit up there for hours and I would time the west, how many west sets, and how much north, and how much every time there was a contest on Oslo surfing, because what the, you know, more west and the north, it pushes the peak in different ways. And then when I was in the water, I had my select lineups for those exact positions on the wave, and I study that day in, day out. <laughs>